All right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thank you again so much for joining me. The topic of today's discussion is going to be the hydraulic synoptic page on the uh, systems uh, display as we've been kind of stepping through the last few segments here, what each of those things means. But before we get started, as always, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave comments down below, hit the notification bell, all that kind of good stuff. It just helps me keep this channel moving forward and uh, keeps this fun, engaging, and exciting, hopefully, for everybody that's watching out there. So uh, before we get started with that, though, I hope everybody is staying healthy and safe out there. I know it's a pretty interesting time with the whole coronavirus thing sweeping the around the world here, so hopefully everybody is doing okay that's watching out there. So we'll go ahead and jump into the topic of today's discussion. So as we said, we'll, we'll talk today about just the indications on the hydraulic page. And, you know, just like what I told you guys last time we talked electrics, I mean, we could dig quite a bit deeper on the hydraulic system itself, but I'm just going to try to keep it somewhat simple today and just focus on the symbology on the screen here so we don't get too far off uh, into the weeds, let's say, with our discussion. So I'll just try to brief through everything uh, somewhat quickly. And as always, if you've got comments or um, anything else you'd like to know about, please leave them in the, uh, the comment section on there, and I'll do my best to field the questions for you, whatever they might be. So uh, let's, you know, first take take a look at the just the hydraulic page in general here, and you know, just from the high level standpoint, uh, just you know, to to uh, take stock of everything here. I mean, we've got three systems on the airplane: the green, the blue, and the yellow. And as I had mentioned before, the the green and the yellow systems are kind of thought of as our main. Uh, hydraulic systems in the airplane that kind of do like most of the heavy lifting and most of the hard work on the airplane. Of course, they share different tasks and, you know, some things are kind of broken up, uh, that, you know, to be dedicated to one system over the other. But like I said, they're, you know, most of the time we're operating the airplane, most of the components are using solely the green and the yellow system. And the blue one in the middle there, quite, quite a bit smaller than the other two systems. And the way that I think of it is more like, you know, B cues my brain to think of backup and it's kind of, you know, to, to some extent, you know, that's what its job is there to do. It's, it's kind of the final backup if, if all else fails. And, you know, we'll, like everything else on the, uh, the airplane, provide a level of redundancy that yields us just enough to kind of make our way home and get things sorted out and, and all that kind of good stuff. So just a high-level thing to, to throw at you guys there. So let's, you know, start um, at the bottom here with these indications. So on the, the bottom of the screen here, we have these little these little, um, you know, the lines and boxes and, and arrows here. So we scroll in and take a little bit closer look here. This, this first of all, all this indicates is the, the condition or the fluid level rather in the reservoir of each respective system. So on the left-hand side here, we have this little arrow pointer that just kind of shows us where in the, the, uh, the range of measure, let's say, that the, the current system quantity resides at. So you see that they're actually a little bit different from system to system. Um, one interesting thing to tell you, uh, you know, when we're flying the airplane or when you have the gear retracted, essentially, there's a considerable amount of fluid that, that kind of, it goes to other portions of the system and just kind of hangs out there. So it's, it's quite normal to see this on the green system anyways, which is the one that controls the, the raising and lowering of the landing gear once again. You'll see the needle kind of hanging down here when, when we're out there cruising. But when you get back on the ground, you'll see the needle slide back up into this little green box position here and that that just tells us that's the normal fill range of the system so you'll you'll see you know if you you look at the other two here that, that don't behave let's say in the same way because of the fact that the landing gear resides in the green system there um, or the the raising or retraction and extension uh, functionality of it anyways you'll see that these are you know parked in their normal um, quantity positions there so um, once again, you know, the, the, the little green box here just tells us that's the normal fill range. The, the, um, the white area in the, in the middle just means that it's somewhere in between the, uh, the normal range and down here, uh, the amber range where it becomes like the cautionary range. And it tells, you know, the operator, of course, or the mechanics that needs servicing. Um, so just, just a very basic, uh, you know, type of depiction of the status of the system there. It is kind of interesting too that, you know, we're, we're never tasked with thinking about the actual quantity like in liters or, or any sort of liquid measure. It's just like all we have is, you know, just these little lines here, these little boxes and just an indication that says, okay, everything's green, you know, you're good to go kind of thing. So it makes it simple. Um, and it, it, of course, it's not so much our concern to actual know or actually know like a specific quantity. We just need to know that the system is doing you know what it needs to do for us and it's got the enough quantity let's say to do its job there so uh, moving up from there um, on the the number one and the num number two side we have these little circles here uh, these are actually shutoff valves so if you uh, think about 
Um, the case of when we went, might want to shut off the actual valve of the hydraulic system, let's say we had a problem with one of the engines and there was something really catastrophic going on, on out there and we wanted to like unplug the engine and all of its functionality from the system uh, in an instant, you know, we could go up on the overhead panel. Remember we have the, the engine fire push buttons that uh, this is one of those items that would happen if you were to, um, to push that uh, in an emergency type situation, you could close the valve there and just cut everything off to the system. Uh, to prevent uh, you know any your situation from becoming worse or maybe you know uh, further fluid loss or or uh, something of that nature let's say or uh, fueling a fire perhaps so uh, these are just the shutoff valves like we said uh, up from there uh, we've got a um, a pump uh, indication here that's just what the boxes mean here so um, on the uh, the number one and the number two side here this this indicates the uh, the engine driven pump interesting enough. And uh, it's, it's strange that they use the same icon to me in the middle here on the blue system, this one, and it, it has a, um, a sign right next to it, it just tells us that this one here in this case is an electric pump. And I, 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 I kind of think if they were being really technical, they could have depicted this in, in a somewhat different manner, but perhaps you know, the, the way that they were looking at it is just to, to kind of say, hey, you know, the main pump for this system is depicted with this box here, and that's all that we really need to know. Once again, like what I just told you guys a second ago, all that we're really concerned with is that the system is functioning normally and all that kind of good stuff. So um, I don't want to beat up Airbus too much about that, but, but I am kind of technically minded as probably uh, most of you folks are that are, that are watching this uh, might be thinking some of the same thoughts. So I just, I pose that one to you here. And, you know, on the yellow side here, you know, we, we do have this electric pump here and they chose to depict this in a slightly different fashion where you, know, you have this little green triangle that if once again you reached up in the overhead panel and you turn the yellow system electric pump on, this would turn green. It would show you that the power is being provided, or the hydraulic power anyways, is being provided by the electric pump. So you know, once again, they, they chose to depict it slightly differently on the yellow side of the system here as they did in the blue system. But um, you know, that just is what it is. Uh, moving up from there, we have the, the RAT or the uh, the ram air turbine pump or the RAT pump. Remember, this is kind of our little emergency pump that pops out of the side of the airplane. It looks like a little propeller. It spins up and it provides enough hydraulic power to, to power that blue system and do everything it needs to do. Uh, so pretty simple and straightforward there. Of course, you know, in our normal condition here, uh, we're just cruising the airplane around and the RAT is not hanging out there. It's not doing anything for us. So we just kind of see it as this the white indication here. Uh, but if it were to power up and be uh, doing, you know, uh, hydraulic powering for us, you'd see the little triangle change to green. Uh, up from there, we have this, uh, the indication here uh, for the portion of the system that, has, that, that deals with the PTU or the, uh, the power transfer unit. So one other conceptual thing to throw at you guys is, you know, just the, the concept of this PTU here is the fact that we can use hydraulic pressure from either the green or the yellow side to provide pressure to the other side. So... What this means is, you know, let's say that, you know, you had the, um, uh, the uh, yellow system completely went down and, you, and all you had left was the green system. Well, you could actually use fluid pressure to turn this little pump that would then, you know, turn the pump on the yellow side and provide system pressure over there. So I guess, you know, one of the most important things that I want to convey to you guys is just the fact that there's not this interconnected nature of the fluids, let's say. So you'll never have fluid mixing from the green to the yellow system physically. It's just the fact that you're able to take hydraulic power from one side and get it to provide hydraulic power on the other side just with this, this interconnected nature, uh, like I said, with this, um, you know, the PTU system here. And, and kind of the way that I think of this is like a gear system, you know, where if you had, you know, a gear that was spinning on one side of a system with like a, um, or, or let's say a water wheel, let's, let's say, you know, water pressure from one side was spinning this gear. Well, if you, you connected the two gears, you could get the water pressure from one side to spin both the gears, and then you would use that gear uh, to go ahead and power the other side to provide some pressure to the opposing side system there. So hopefully that concept makes sense to you guys. A little bit confusing when you first sit down and, and uh, think about this, um, but uh, that is the way that it's designed. And um, the, the PTU is designed to operate anytime it sees a system pressure uh, between the green and yellow systems of more than 500 PSI. So this all happens automatically. You'll kind of hear, you know, the, the PTU going off. It's kind of that the, um, the barking dog, you know, sound that you hear uh, when you're in the, the cabin there in the back of the Airbus. I mean, you, you're probably familiar with, with what that is and what that sounds like, but that's just um, what that's all about, what it's doing for you. And one other thing to point out too is, you know, a very uh, important uh, little depiction on the icon here is just this little 
half moon shape here that just shows there's no interconnectivity into the blue system. So just as everything I just told you uh, applies, you, you would only, you know, the, the PTU is only there to provide um, power transfer between the green and yellow systems, uh, if that makes sense to you guys. And of course, um, the, the indications here being a little bit different as well. Uh, right now, the PTU is not functioning, but if it was, these green triangles would actually fill in and uh, become solid um, you know, green triangles. So once again, kind of a little nitpicky thing to, to throw it, uh, the, the real technical people out there, they, they chose to, to pick these as uh, green triangles as opposed to the, the, uh, the white ones. So uh, by all means, if anybody out there knows uh, the specific reasons by any of these things, the way they were designed, please chime in and, and uh, educate me. I'd, I'd love to know. So it pretty much tackles the, the PTU indications there. And then the, the final ones that we see up at the top here, are just the, the system pressures. Uh, normally, we'll see somewhere around 3,000 psi, and I think the the book uh, says uh, you know, 3,000 psi plus or minus 100. So you might see some slight fluctuations uh, in the the system pressures there. But of course, we just know you know 3,000 is a generally normal uh, system pressure that we're going to see. And of course, if there was some deviation from this, you're going to get a uh, some some sort of indication uh, on the ecam there to let you know what's going on. Um, because the airplane knows what it's supposed to be doing at uh, whatever given phase of flight you're in or whatever uh, phase of operation we're in. So uh, pretty simple and straightforward stuff there. And then just at, at the top here, there's also a green trial and goal that just shows us that, um, you know, after all this, um, this passage, let's say the fluid through the system and everything we're depicting here, it's just routing out into the normal uh, components. So it, it usually goes out to power in, in the, the whole the hydraulic system there in the airplane. So. Uh, as with all these guys, I hope that all makes sense to everybody. If you have some questions, um, please go ahead and leave them down below. I'll do my best to field them for you. So I uh, hope you're all having a wonderful day. Everybody stay healthy and safe out there, and we'll talk again real soon. Bye-bye.